Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Rosta. We are having a conversation with Taffa Chia Lewis, a venturesome actress, dramaturge, director, and writer. And she is responsible for God Save the Queen, a poignant and timely drama that follows Legacy, a young woman from a Caribbean island, as she pursues her dreams of becoming an actress in a country that once colonized her homeland. We get a little more into the conversation after this. Ms. Taffa, how you doing, ma'am? I am good and a happy day to you. It's lovely Thank to be here. Thank you so much. And the pleasure is ours. Because it seems that I want you to answer the person who is asking, no, I like theatre, I like drama, but I'm not sure what I could do with that, especially if mommy and daddy me want me to be something with an er at the end, like doctor mm -hmm. or lawyer, according mm -hmm. to Portuguese language. Um, this is interesting because when I was a child, I was interested in psychodrama. And I think I still have an interest. Um, so for the Earl, um, there's drama. It's not just about you acting on stage. There's the aspect where in terms of intervention, you can use drama for intervention, whether it is in communities or if it is psychological intervention, where you will see drama therapists. And you'd see you now in the industry, we have drama therapists working on productions for plays and films. Because you want to make sure that people are doing ethically sound practices and things that are healthy for you. Um, even in the workplace, theater and drama helps to keep people together, help to deal with teamwork and making sure that even though you don't like somebody, you know how to, re how to respond and work with them in an emotionally intelligent way. So, uh, and, it's, and it's good to play. You know, there's benefits, as we know, we hear psychologists speak about it, the benefits of playing and playing as adults. And how do we return to that? You know, especially coming out of the pandemic and everybody having that type of traumatic experiences of, the, of being isolated. Playing, getting back to playing and that off-screen play has a lot of health benefits as well. So for the er, uh, that's my response. And you, you, you spoke about coming out of the pandemic and this, and this piece that you're responsible for also has a backdrop coming out of the pandemic. What are some of the things that went into the or some of the things that would have influenced work on this for it to come out the way that it is now? The first thing I would say was the challenge of leaving, because I, act, I actually, even though the story is about legacy, there's some parallels, um, there's some parallels between me and this character. And so at the time, um, 2020, I would have been, I got into two drama schools at the time. So I said, like, I don't need no other sign that I need to go. You know, if I get through one in London, one in Scotland, all right, Taffa, it's time to go. And um, at that time, you had to write the minister, I can't remember exactly who, to leave the country. You had to get approval to leave the country, and it was quite a fleet. And so that would have been one of the challenges, leaving the country, dealing with friends, family, even teachers. Like, why you want to leave the, the country at this time? You don't know what to have outside the you know, um, there was no vaccine in sight, all of these conversations. Um, so that there's this strong will to want to follow your passion. And so legacy and I have that parallel. And another major thing would be grief. At the time being out there, um, when I left, I knew that there were family members I may never see again, such as my grandmother, who I was very close to. Um, and so dealing with the grief of being there, I would always say I had to be there uh, in isolation because my flatmate didn't care about COVID and ended up getting COVID. And I had to be in isolation doing a eulogy for my grandmother. And the funeral was here in Trinidad. And you have nobody to deal with, you know, or to, to be able to relate with in terms of a human way. And so it's the challenge of lack of human interaction, being in isolation. What the hell are you going to do this thing for at this time? You know, um, so some of those and then dealing with you know, being in a country where, you know, it's predominantly Afro-Trinidadian or Indo-Trinidadian. And when you go into these spaces, now you are seen as, you know, you're just plastered as black. You're the only person in the class, this black woman, and you are expected by their stereotypes to respond and act a certain way, you know? Um, so those were, those are some of the interesting things that come out in this story as well. Let's, 
Let's dive a little deeper and go into your story. You just spoke about your grandmother, who we have this connection with. What are some of the signposts along the road that would have led to you getting these two signs in terms of not just London, but Scotland? Say, this young lady had things. We want her to be uh, a student at our institution. So what are some of those things that led you on this journey to where you are now? Um, the major thing would be um, being allowed to imagine. So I had a lot of, like all my dolls. So I, my mother talks about it, that I should have, I should be a teacher. So I end up, I teach her as well, but of course it's in the line of drama, you know, it's, it's still in the line of what I want to do. And I would have all my dolls and I talk into these dolls and beating it. And my grandmother, don't forget the beating part. It was just because I thought I was a teacher at the time. But my grandmother and my mother, they would have encouraged that play as opposed to some some parents might be like, what are you doing? You're talking to yourself, you know, um, or flagging it if something was wrong. And having, I would say having those two pillars, my grandmother and my mother. My grandmother used to make everything with her hand. So I remember she smoked. So she had a lot of Dumori boxes and she made table mats, weave the boxes into table mats, you know? So these are little things, but they, it's major influences for a child seeing it. And all of my dolls, she finally dolls didn't have enough color, didn't have enough flavor. It wasn't Caribbean enough. She made all of my dolls. She would buy the best fabric and make the dolls and the teddy bears. And I would perform for her and I never felt a sense of you're talking too much or, you know, you need to be quiet. And I think having that type of space for freedom of play helped me to be a confident performer. And my the school I went, I went to Dominique's private school, which at the time, my, my mother said she sent me there because I was too gypsy. I don't know to this day what she means, you know? And so that school, what I would say is that they had a lot of opportunity to perform from small, you know? And so I was able to discover what I wanted to do at a young age. So I think those two advantages, having the, those pillars to let me be free, it did a lot for my work, even now. What, one of the things I find very funny is that they say, to this day, you don't know what mommy mean, but at the same time, you, Miss Taffa, are the person who, while everybody's saying, okay, well, shelter in place, they won't do interact with nobody, decide, okay, well, you go in school, you are the person from the Caribbean, yes. from Trinidad and Tobago, teaching in India, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I, I taught, not at the, well, COVID time, but yes, I did teach you, yes. By chance, you had students in Jamaica too? No, Antigua. Okay. So I do understand how you say you, you, you're palming off and say you don't know what mommy mean. But anyhow, that's just me. But in terms of making the decision, though, what, what are some of the things that led to the decision of, okay, well, I'm going to London or I'm going to Scotland? Frustration. Um, frustration because as an actor, I think this is my truth. Um, sometimes in terms of training, one of the best things we have at home is that on the go training, being in the community and discovering, you know, your talents, um, because we are, people, let's call it triple threats. I think once you're Caribbean, you have that, yes, because you have to sing, you're singing, you're dancing, you're moving, it's just in it, it's in your fabric. And so that community building work, and even, I, but I went to this, um, the Department of Creative and Festival at UWE. And so the topics, it's still very broad in terms of acting. You really learn acting from being a part of the production or program. But in terms of deconstructing the art of acting, there's a frustration sometimes at home for actors because you feel as if you need more tools. And that was my plight because acting has always been my first love. And you're doing productions and you're feeling as if you're not quite getting the pinnacle of what you can do. You know, I've... I've done Gael since I was 16. It was National Theatre Arts Company, but there's a level of truth telling you feel as if you owe the characters and I, I needed to I needed to have more tools. And so that frustration led to me trying to figure out, okay, and at the time I didn't have the money to go there, but I, you see the will for something is an important thing. I tell myself, I say, let me try, you know, let me try, you're done home already. Um, and for me, every audition is a performance. 
I don't look at our audition as, oh gosh, they had to pick me. I look at it as, as an opportunity for them to see the work. And if you like to perform, then perform. So that's what I was doing. I was, and my husband, he's very supportive. I carry him in there and all. He was the one who was helping me film, film. We, were, we had dress rehearsals of filming the auditions just to make sure it was as if it was theater. Because I, I do theater and film, but I like the comfort of when you rehearse something in dress rehearsal, then you know you have it packed. And not the seven takes or eight takes that it might take, you know. Um, so I did a one take and it was either that or that. And the both schools loved it. So that process worked for me. So I think, yeah, the, the frustration to answer your question was one of the main things. And we talk about God Save the Queen specifically when we come back from the break. We're speaking with Tapachia Lewis. Stay with us. we we'll return after this. Welcome back. We are speaking with an individual who I consider more than a triple threat, Taffa Chia Lewis, and God Save the Queen. And you said from jump, you've always been interested in psychodrama. Uh, is there any of that that we see in God Save the Queen? Um, what you see is the interplay of the audience as a participant of the work. So, of course, I, I'm concerned about, like, you know, trigger warnings, just making sure that people who come to the show, and there's a debate about that. Eh? We have some purists who's fine, like, it's theater, we don't, we don't need no trigger warning, right? That is a young people thing now. And then there are people like me who believe that you I should I should choose, because when you're watching Netflix and you're scrolling and you're seeing the ratings, et cetera, et cetera, you should, you, everybody has autonomy, right? So I think, those aspects of understanding ethics and understanding that, you know, you want to make sure that people are always leading, leading their choices, even in entertainment. So I think the treatment of that and in the work, the work is immersive because the style of theater I'm interested in is I just, I want you to come and be entertained. I, I like to laugh. So there's a lot of comedy in the work as well. And as Trinbegonians, comedy is a way in which we um, deal with our problems and we heal. So it's only natural that I would program that into the work, but it's about you knowing that you still have a choice. Um, you, you are watching this performance at aspects that you wish you could change in real life, you can. So I think those are the things that I plot in that would be, you know, a part of ethics and possibly tra drama therapy. Ideally, I wish that at all the performances, there's a drama therapist outside for in case somebody wants to speak but I think in terms of our industry, we're working towards that and we are not there yet. There are a few things, well, and I like the fact because you never know what someone is coming to the table with. You never know what someone is dealing with, even though we may try to be inclusive. So in the same way that you would have owned your, your response and said, this is my truth. So it's not as though... This is a blanket statement. This is my experience and this is what I'm sharing. I like the fact that you allow that level of empowerment to individuals saying, okay, well, these are some of the things that are being explored. But it seems as though your work has a lot of exploration in it. And how important was it that there's a level of self-discovery that is being engaged in the piece that you're dealing with? I think it was very important, self-discovery and healing of self, because at the end of the day, the journey was arduous, um, both for me as an individual and um, as an artist. What I would have had to, to, to sacrifice to get to writing God Save the Queen. Um, in fact, God Save the Queen was made, first it was made at the Norwegian Theatre Academy. Um, and that would have that would have come out of my mentor who passed Tony Hall, who was a lecturer there. And so the interactions, the paths that he would have paved for me to be able to go there to do that residency. Um, of course, in terms of self-discovery, 
people laughed at me because at the time in Scotland, it was a bit tough for me in Glasgow. And um, this was a comment somebody said, you know, you left a one white country to go to our next white country um, to feel safe. And that was something to unpack. You know, those type of conversations. But it was because of the seeds Tony had there at that school that it was the closest thing to home I had because he, he, he was there. His teachings was there and it was present, you know, and it meant a lot in terms of full circle to be able to go back there at that time. And that that was a moment of self-discovery for me because here I had him, Tony Hall, and Ralph Campbell, my other mentor, both would have passed while I was going. And during these times, even now, I would call them when I make any work and ask, what do you think about this, etc., etc. And I didn't have them. And I still don't. I have them still because they're transitioned in a different way. And it's the discovery of understanding, you know, legacy. And maybe that's why the character is named Legacy. And what that means, as, as well as finding, finding your own voice and that what you have to say as well, is valid and they are leaving space for you to do so as as well as you doing it for others so you see self-discovery and healing i think for me and for me and tony morrison speaks about it like when you're creating writing it's not about making it when things are it's a good time or it's the best time but it's when it's a dark time sometimes and how we are able to get onto the other side if there is an other side or stay in the moment of um of that what whatever retribution needs to happen and i think even just bringing this work home i will tell you this is a secret although we are we everybody here in this making bringing this work home is the biggest challenge for me because the home audience is the most critical is the most me like that is the most um uh, accepting us some someone whose story you can relate with or you are, can able to see more mirroring that mirroring is something that's it's kind of difficult for people to face so i i will i would perform it in there in norway everywhere and any day i mightn't care as much but the stakes are here i care a lot and so this is about self-discovery for me you know that sense of belonging and being able to despite if everybody doesn't like it this is my work and this is what i need to say at this time and you talk about Tony Hall, peace be upon him, and it makes it makes more sense now the response that you would have given in terms of being immersive so that the audience can have a say on what takes place next. Because I think that is a from my understanding, as a big part of the Juve process, in yes. terms of what is the end? Mm -hmm. We're in a constantly evolving process. What is the destination? Well, let's find it all together. Mm -hmm. But in terms of finding all together, give me a little information about when it is we see in God Save the Queen, how it is people getting on to do to check out legacy and to have and have a little input into her ending. Okay, so it's the 26th, 27th, and 28th of July, um, 2024, this year. And so it is at so Social Sciences Lounge, University of the West Indies Campus, St. Augustine. Um, we have our tickets on Island E. And for those that, you know, you want to do that, communicate old school, you could call me or you could call my mother's phone. I get my mother involved in this, you understand? So you know, you know the community involved. So you can call, I have I have the numbers. Um, and so, and we will engage you in terms of a ticket. Um, but that's the information for the show. And it's at 7.30 p.m. on a Friday because I realized after work, people don't like to rush. Right, so it's seven thirty on the Friday, seven p.m. on the Saturday, and seven on the Sunday. Because after you make the macaroni pie and stuff, you want to be relaxed when you come out. So I'm given seven p.m. Some people get chance to burp twice before they come out instead of disrupting the proceedings. But where else can people find out what it is you do? Because you say that mommy involved, but I hear no number. So okay, yeah, let me. Do. So the number for the tickets is four eight eight seven five nine three. And three three five one seven one three, right? And then on our social media platforms, Theatral Journey, um, on Instagram and Facebook, that has all of the information as well. And we have people on our team to engage with you. Papa Chia Lewis, we want to thank you for involving us in this work as we work towards finding ourselves. And this every because everybody is on a journey, yeah? and yes. so we we thank you for showing us one possibility 
And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Ronstar. Thank you so much for joining us.